You probably heard about Langgraph Studio, a new tool of the Langchain team which lets you visualize agents live as they run. You can see in which node they currently are and you get a lot of additional information. Unfortunately, it's not open source, it only works on Mac currently and I wondered, can we actually build something like this on our own? And yes, we actually can. I'm gonna show you in this proof of concept how we can achieve this. Langchain, which is the underlying framework of Langgraph, offers so-called callback handlers. Langchain offers multiple callback handlers. Callback handlers are objects that implement the callback handler interface, which has a method for each event that can be subscribed to. The callback manager will call the appropriate method on each handler when the event is triggered. First, we're gonna create this simple Langgraph graph. We pass a message, add a letter to each message in the node, and we even have conditional routes. We do a simple cycle, so it's a very basic graph, but it contains everything that is important in Langgraph. When we just run it, it looks like this. But let's now create our custom callback handler. We want to hook in the following methods. On chain start, which is running when a chain or node is starting. We also want to know when a chain or node ends, so we also need on chain end. We have to extract that information from a rather complex object. We also need to exclude some of the runnable names, since they should not be displayed. In this print state callback handler, we only want to print when the node execution starts and when the node execution stops. To make that callback handler work, we just have to pass the callback handler inside this config dictionary. Okay, so this works. Now let's extend on this. Instead of just printing the information, we can also send this information somewhere to be processed. A good idea is to create an API to have a standardized interface. We're gonna use FastAPI and we'll make use of WebSockets, which allow real-time communication between the server and clients. This means that our Langchain agents run, trigger the callback events, we send real-time data to our FastAPI server, and then the server will broadcast this information via WebSockets to any connected client. In our case, a front-end built with React. To build our back-end, we first have to import some classes. From FastAPI, the FastAPI class, we also want a socket manager because we want real-time connection to the front-end and course middleware because we are running on localhost and want to enable the front-end to talk to our back-end. Then we're gonna create an instance of our app, add course as middleware, create an instance of our socket manager, and then we create our base model. This is the way our front-end expects the data, so we need a description for our node and we also need the data inside of our node. We also want to store our application data that we are going to send to the front end and that is currently stored in memory. We create a dictionary with nodes that is currently an empty list and edges which is also an empty list and we're gonna add on that in memory. We're then gonna create our add node endpoint here. We pass node data and we're gonna use that node data to append that node data to this list which is initially empty and with that data we're gonna track all the information that is tracked in the current Langgraph run. So this information comes from the user, in our example from the Jupyter Notebook and we use the socket manager to emit that data and now a front end can listen to that emit event and add that in the front end. The next step is get graph. Here we get all the information of our execution data with this simple get endpoint. We also want to be able to reset the graph so we clear every entry in this nodes data list and also in the edges list. We then again emit this event to the front end. We then need to configure our socket manager. This part of the code listens for a run graph event from a connected client. It logs the client session ID and emits an acknowledgement message back to the specific client indicating that the graph is currently running. At the end, we have to define how we want to run the application and we're gonna use Ubicorn, which is the default web server for FastAPI. We run the application on port 8000. Great, so we now have got our backend service. We can now create our API callback handler. It looks pretty much the same as our print callback handler, but instead of just printing the node, it will send the information to our backend endpoints. Next step is to build a front end for that. You can of course use any Python framework too, but since I know JavaScript and find these modern JS frameworks much easier to use with comfortable functionalities like state management and automatic DOM updates, I will use React for this project. We can easily create a new project with the Vite command line, select React as template, add Tailwind for the styling, and then create a graph visualization component. There are many libraries for creating any kind of visualization, but since the graph 
as we wanted is rather non-standard, I will use D3.js, a low-level visualization library in JavaScript. Since our application is rather small, we can build everything in the app JSX, which is a special JavaScript syntax which allows us to mix JavaScript and HTML in a single file. We're first going to import our app.css for the styling. We import I.O. from the WebSockets library and we also import everything from the real library. We're also going to import useEffect and useState to save the information that we receive from the backend. We now can connect to our backend by using the I.O. library and we create a new socket instance by connecting to localhost port, port 8000. In the next step, we're going to use useEffect. That useEffect is a hook of React that listens to a WebSocket connection for update events and then processes the upcoming data to update the state of the nodes. As you can see, this is done here and we save that as new state. The next step after saving the data in our state is to use that state to create our D3 visualization. So we're gonna use D3.js and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a new SVG and we're gonna set for this SVG the height and the width and so on, so everything that we need for our visualization. So this code here dynamically creates and appends rectangular shapes to an SVG and that represents the node in a dataset. And each rectangle is positioned, sized and styled based on the associated data which is set here. In the next step we add another group here associated with this G element and here we add a label. So we always of course want to know which node is currently running and this is why we need a label. The next step is that we create a link. So we always want to know the data flow. So it goes from node A to node B to node C and so on and this is why we want to set these links between the nodes. At the end we somehow have to return a div element from that component and this is what's going on here. So we create multiple classes with different Tailwind classes to create this card component with the visual visualization and the labeled nodes. At the end we just have to export everything and use it in our main.gsx. This is where the app component lives. And this is enough for rendering the application. Okay, so what do you think of this prototype? Please let me know your opinion in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.